everybody for joining um, the virtual boardroom today. Um, Linda Tong is going to be facilitating it and I'll hand you over to Linda in a second. The topic is around psychological intelligence. So I'll let, hand you over to Linda. She can do a better job of introducing herself than I can and she can tell you what the boardroom is going to be about today. Thank you, Joe. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Linda Tung. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to a topic that uh, is about drivers. And um, before I get into it, um, I'm a leadership trainer, coach, coach supervisor. I've been teaching um, transactional analysis concepts in organizations since about the beginning of the 1990s. And I've been working in organizations since I was just working out the middle of the 1970s, which just makes me feel incredibly old, but I'll keep going. Um, so I've been teaching TA in organizations across public and private sector since about 1991. And Transactional analysis is not a very sexy title. It's, um, it's a bit of a misnomer in a way, but it's, it's about being able to read the process, what's going on between people. And there's a whole framework of concepts um, that, that fit together to give an individual a really cohesive set of um, concepts to understand behavior, their own behavior and those of other people. Um, so if you've ever been in a situation where you've come away from a conversation and thought, I don't know what was going on there really. Something feels a bit funny. It's like you felt something in the process. Well, transactional analysis gives us some tools to do some diagnosis and to analyze what might be happening. I'm I'd like to share my screen, um, which I can do. You give me a moment. Get this lined up, not that. So driver behaviors is what we're looking at in this brief time. And I do thank you for sharing your time with me. Um, TA is a powerful communications tool. It's, it's also a theory of personality. You can see I'm nervous, can't you? Except that my writing on a flip chart has never been that great. It's a sort of developmental point for me. So it's a theory of personality and it's also a theory of child development. Now, I'm an organizational transactional analyst, not easy to say. Um, I don't go around in organizations doing therapy with people, but sometimes they will offer um, in a coaching or a training session some aspects about their early life that they may want to sort of use to understand some of their current behavior. So, Beliefs at an unconscious level lead to behavior. It's a bit like the, the sort of iceberg thing. Our beliefs are down here and we don't know, don't realize that actually they're driving our behavior. And it would be really good in terms of our own stress management, our own well-being, if we could... Um, if we could understand what's driving some of our behavior. So that if we wanted to change something, you know, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. So you have to know about it first in order to, to decide whether you want to change it or not. Driver behavior is really about strengths. It's about strengths that um, turn into weaknesses when we're under pressure. Now, we're all busy people. I bet there are one or two people on this call who are under pressure. 
maybe 50% of you, maybe even more, where you're juggling lots of things. Let's face it, it's been a really difficult 18 months anyway. We're under pressure. And actually, sometimes it's more than pressure. We're not really grounded at all. We're in a sort of negative place, if you like. So our driver behaviors can turn to weaknesses. Our strengths can turn to weaknesses when we're under pressure. It's like we go into overdrive. So what serves us well normally is no longer working for us. The, the weird thing is we don't see it like that. We think, well, I'm just doing what I always do. And now I can't un understand why um, this isn't working for me. It must be that the world has gone mad. It can't be me. When instead of which, it is often that we've got too much on our plate. We're trying to juggle too much. We don't take care of ourselves in terms of exercise, fresh air, diet, sleep. And then we wonder why sometimes we crash and fall over. So you can very much look at driver behaviors from a, a well-being point of view, as well as leadership, as well as team building. This is stuff that human beings do, and we, we all do it. And it's, it's really not helpful. The good thing is we can change it. So under, having some understanding about really what drives our behavior and what gets us into difficulty with certain people um, is useful in our personal and our professional lives. I do focus quite a lot on leadership when I work with organizations. Um, I do work with teams as well, but I'm, I'm always wanting to point out that if a leader isn't grounded in an organization, and let's face it, leaders have a lot on their plates too, if they're not in a grounded place, then the danger is that they are now in their driver place and they're causing problems within the team. I'll say a bit more. Is this pace okay? I feel like I'm gabbling quite a lot. Is anybody wanting me to slow down? Is it okay? Could you give me a thumbs up? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good, okay. I'll stop my hurry up from working. I think that's what I'll do. So in the 50s and 60s, um, an American psychotherapist and businessman called Taby Kaler did a lot of work, a lot of research and work with NASA in particular, did a lot of work with lots of companies, but he was tasked with thinking about what are the behaviors that are going to cause friction in a close-knit team that are in a tiny capsule flying around the world for months on end. And he came up with uh, driver behavior. So in, in working with lots and lots and lots of leaders, he continued with his research and he identified five what he called drivers, personality traits. He called them drivers because we feel compelled to behave this way. We've learned it as a small child. We actually pick up our drivers from our parents or primary caregivers. So what we got praised for were things that, that are probably down to their drivers. So if we got lots of praise for being tidy and clearing up our toys and getting high marks at school, then it's like we develop that because we're getting praise for it. And it's, it's like a, an encouragement to keep going with that. So if your mum particularly likes it that you're really tidy and you want to please mum, then you'll be tidy. The thing is that we pick up these drivers as a way of fitting in with our, the first team we ever belong to, which is our family. And we don't always um, balance them up as a grown up. We still continue to have a tendency to work in these ways. 
But I do want to point out that, that there are strengths and there are weaknesses. We've got them all. Please don't only focus as I go through them on the weaknesses. Because there is a, an alternative way, another side of the coin, in fact, to be thinking about that. So I'm going to look at hurry ups first. So what we're talking about here, hurry ups, be perfect, please people, try hards and be strong. Some of you may be familiar with these terms, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, they describe behavior. And one of the great strengths of TA is that the, the, the founding um, father of TA, if you like, Eric Byrne, was very, very keen that this was all user-friendly and accessible language. So language that um, people could really understand and work with for the rest of their life. Because he was very much about not creating a dependency on the psychotherapist. Rather than, rather than being in therapy for 20 years, the idea is that you learn some of these tools and you can work on them yourself forever more if you want to. So probably the best thing to do is for me to go all the way through them. And I'm, I'll go through the strengths and the weaknesses and then I'll see if there are any questions at the end. Is that okay with everyone? Excellent. Hurry ups. Hurry ups are people who think fast, talk fast. If you want to, if you want to diagnose, listen to speech patterns. They think fast, they talk fast, um, and they're highly productive. They kind of attack work. They love getting work done. They get energy from it. They do it quickly. In this strengths end, they, um, they handle pressure really well. They've usually got lots of plates spinning at the same time, which can be a problem. They, um, they're, they're thinking ahead to what comes next and what comes next and how can I do it all quicker? So they love going on a journey that they do regularly and like to sort of just get through those lights. And if they can just get round that roundabout, they'll get to the hotel or the meeting three minutes ahead of where they might have done if they'd taken a few breaths and given themselves a bit more of a, of a, a, a gentler ride, if you like. So in the positive end, they are work focused. Um, they, they really like to achieve. And they'll be the same, like all the drivers, whether they're at home um, cooking a Sunday roast, they'll be doing three other jobs at the same time, rather than just focusing on, you know, what my, my Yorkshire's be doing or something. It's been a long time since I made a Yorkshire pudding, I have to say. So lots of good things. But if we go over to the negative side, the weakness side, they can be a bit intolerant. If you're not thinking as fast as they are, they get a bit frustrated and it's like, come on, come on, come on. It doesn't take this long, does it? And so they sometimes are intolerant. They may not listen well. Um, they like to finish your sentences for you because it's quicker if I tell you what you're going to say. And of course that causes friction because actually you don't know what they're going to say. So they're all about speed. They, they're impatient. When they're in the driver end, they're impatient. They, um, those plates spinning, they'll hear a crash and just think, oh, well, never mind. Um, you know, I do all this work. What does it matter about the odd mistake? Well, that mistake could be quite significant, of course, and they might not have made it if they hadn't been juggling so many late. They'll be the ones who come in late to a meeting 
without the relevant paperwork because they were doing three jobs before the meeting. And so they rush in late for your meeting and they start sort of drumming their fingers on the table and saying, oh, come on, can't we make a decision quicker than this? Anyway, I'm late for the next meeting and they've gone sort of calling something over their shoulder and you don't quite know what they're saying. Does this resonate for anybody? One or two nods. You might be a hurry up. You might have some hurry up. You might know somebody very dear to you who has a hurry up. Your boss might be hurry up. And we need to start thinking about how we might clash with other people and how even if we've got the same driver, we might get more competitive. Two hurry ups talking to each other. It's like, whoa, you can't keep up sometimes. The thing to say as well is that these are broad uh, descriptions, of course. I'm sure you realize that. These are broad descriptions. Um, people are not, you know, you can't put people in little boxes and say, right, you do this, it means that. These are tendencies, of course. And some people's, um, some people's driver behavior is off the scale. Some people's isn't, it's sort of there. It just depends. And it depends on how much pressure they're under. So hurry ups, loads of good things and some things to pay attention to. Be perfect. I know I'm going to get my color scheme confused. You'll have to bear with me. Be perfects are very methodical. They're very specific. They have high standards. Doesn't matter what they're doing, high standards. They will dress um, absolutely perfectly for the role. The handwriting, <laughs> mine, will, mine will give them a, um, a meltdown. Their handwriting is generally very uh, neat and they'll have everything organized. They won't like the fact, by the way, that I've only, I haven't finished off the word high because that's how you spell high. And I'm being a bit silly to kind of, uh, for comical effect, if you like but they are very specific and they get more specific the more pressure they're under. They um, are really good with detail. They are um, very good with making sure that the team don't forget things. They'll have a system for that. So they're great in a, in a team. They, they stop the team from committing um, committing themselves to things they can't actually meet because they've, they've got it clear and they're on top of it. So loads of um, really good traits, high standards, um, really specific, they, they write lists. They're really big on lists. Sometimes though, they might start writing lists of the lists they're going to write. And that's like, hmm, perhaps that's not quite required. Um, and over on this negative side, this weaknesses side, they can be, um, they can procrastinate. They might miss deadlines because I've just got to polish up that report. I can't send it out yet. It, um, it needs another detail or 10. Um, they will, they will also, by the way, um, pick up any typos that you might have made in your reports, if your bosses would be perfect. Um, and, um, you know, in fact, they're almost like not happy until they've said, oh dear, um, this apostrophe shouldn't be here. And, you know, the apostrophe rule can often... Uh, get them very exercised. So don't get into a conversation about apostrophe rules. Um, they can over detail. They can tell you the same thing three times just to make sure you've got it. By which time 
people have lost the will to live or are thinking, you know, don't you trust me here? I've got it. I understand. They don't easily delegate because nobody can do the job quite as quickly as I can. Or not quickly, sorry, quite as well as I can. So, of course, be perfects can land up with a huge workload because they don't easily delegate. And so they can often be the first ones in in the morning and the last ones leaving, switching the light out as they go. So their stress can be very much about thinking they need to do it all and do it all to a high standard. So um, sometimes it's like the equivalent of printing bingo tickets on high class, good quality conqueror headed paper or something. It's too much. And they could really do themselves a favor if they cut themselves some slack. And I'm not saying lower standards. I'm saying be real about what the standards are. What do, what's really needed here? There'll be a few people um, be perfects in the group, I'm sure. And you'll be the ones who wake up at three o'clock in the morning worried about a mistake that you think you've committed that actually nobody else often has even noticed. Um, so if you, if you value your sleep, you might want to think about this. So if you've got a be perfect boss, indeed, if you are a leader on this call and you're a be perfect, you might be creating standards within the team that are just too high. So I'm not, I'm not um, encouraging shoddy workmanship or anything here, but it's just too much. I am very old and I always think about a film called Bridge on the River Kwai, which probably a couple of people are gonna know what I'm talking about. Alec Guinness in, in Burma creates this beautiful bridge really perfectly and then realizes that all he's done is created a problem for, uh, for himself and his comrades. So yeah, not, not so good. Be perfect need to give themselves permission to just be human. Humans make mistakes, it's okay. So please people on the positive side, are kind, they're thoughtful, caring, nurturing, their focus is on other people. You get a lot of please people in HR. They're people people. Um, they like to please everybody, which of course we rationally know we can't do. Can't please everybody all of the time. And they take it, they, they may take things personally when they can't please people. I am exaggerating, um, just to make the point. They are very good at reading body language and feeling the vibe in a room. They'll recognize that Fred's gone a bit quiet. So they might say, Fred, um, are you okay with that decision we've just made in the team? And they'll check it out. They're very, um, they're, they're, they're sensitive to other people's needs. We can detect drivers in speech patterns. So hurry up to speak really quickly. Be perfect, give you lots of detail. And they give you details in brackets, which can be a bit confusing. And they'll tell you the same thing over and over again. If you're really listening for these things, you can identify what trait the person in front of you has. Please, people will use vague terms like, you know what I mean? and kinder. It's like, it's not definite. The thought being that if you don't like what I'm saying, I'll change it, which of course gets them into all sorts of trouble. And actually they were only trying to be nice in the first place. So they land up feeling hurt. Over here on the, the negative end, it's a bit, as I've just been saying, they can be hypersensitive. Um, they can take things personally. 
they can um, they can worry and be anxious about whether they've offended somebody. So they'll be waking up at three o'clock in the morning, running over a conversation they had or preparing for a difficult conversation where they know the other person in that conversation is not going to be happy with what they've got to say. They really care. And the problem with that is it can lead them to being unclear. It's, it's the vagueness really. So, so they're, not, they're, not always, they're not always firm. They're not always um, not firm or clear, I'll put. And they put everybody else before themselves. They're the last on the list. They're so busy looking after other people, they forget themselves until eventually they, they do fall over and then they might, get, um, they might get into a bit of martyrdom. You know, so oh, I don't feel very well, but I'll still cook the dinner even though I don't feel very well. Oh dear, I really don't feel very well. And nobody's taking any notice because there's a lack of clarity there. So they often do not look after their own needs and be clear about it. On the positive side of uh, tryhards, tryhards are, they try hard. They are one of life's triers. They try hard about everything whether they need to or not. They um, will spend 100% of their time, 125% creating a new system. Um, so they'll put lots of effort in. In fact, they have to make it, they have to make it an effort. They have to, it's almost like, well, it's not working unless it's really hard. So they're good with ideas. They're good, um, but they're good with people because they see other people as a good source of ideas. So their interpersonal skills are usually good as well. They're creative. They'll often have lots of books, books they don't read, but you know, they like to touch them or something. You might, um, these are only a few. So it says something about my drivers. Um, they can be very persistent in what they're doing. Um, they're sort of almost dogged about it. And they are, they're very willing. They will volunteer. If you're the manager of a team, I don't know why that's jumping. I'm sorry. It's irritating. Um, if you're the, the manager of a team, you'll notice that Fred's always got his hand up and, and um, Susan's always got her hand up as well. And they're both tryhards, almost competing with each other for the new project or whatever. But after a while, you might realize that you're not getting any of this work back. Or obviously you would be, you do something about it. But um, as I say, I'm being quite broad. Um, tryhards don't finish. They don't complete. When they're in the driver end, they don't complete. So um, they'll have the relics of long dead hobbies lying around the house, passions that were, that were really all they thought about for months was tap dancing or crochet or playing chess. But they got bored with those and they've gone on to taekwondo or um, cross stitch or something. So they, they, have a, they tend to go off on tangents and you can hear that in their speech patterns. They do a sort of butterfly brain thing. And if you're really listening, you'll have to bear with me. I'm sorry, I don't know why that's jumping. Um, you can hear and you might start to think, oh, I wonder if, I wonder if the person in front of me is a tryhard. And then you might just want to listen a bit more and check it out. They can often chase qualifications as well. 
So they try really hard, um, spend a lot of their spare time working on achieving a qualification and they just get to the top of that mountain. And as they're on the top of that mountain and they've achieved and they've got their certificate and they've had their ceremony and it's great, instead of enjoying it and sort of looking at the view, they're actually looking for the next mountain to climb. So rather than having one degree, they've got three or, you know, whatever it might be. I've got nothing against that, but it's, it's the compulsion it's like I can't rest and that can be danger, dangerous in terms of well-being. So really good on the working styles end, in the strengths end, they volunteer, they put extra effort in, they will be persistent if they're in the here and now. But in the driver end, they tend to forget about finishing, they go off at tangents. Um, and you can hear in their speech patterns, they will use the word try a lot. I'm going to try and do this. And it's like, well, are you going to do it or not? Well, I'm going to try. It's not the same thing. It's I won't make a commitment to it. You'll hear the word struggle, difficult. Um, and they'll frown a lot as well. It's this really, really difficult, Linda, isn't it? And I'll be thinking, well, not really, no. There must be something you're doing with it that's making it difficult. Their commitment is to trying rather than being successful. Because they got a lot of attention maybe in their young families when they were young for putting in effort, for trying hard. I hope you've got lots of questions. I'll just finish this piece off with looking at um, B Strong's. Now, B Strong's are very task focused. They're very good in a crisis. Um, they can be very direct. They give orders, instructions really clearly. They, um, they like to know they give orders and they also take orders they like to know where they stand so they focus on task and not people so in the working style end they need to learn about well they need to learn something from the please people really they need to bring that side out in them so they can combine the people and task thing so in the working style end, strengths end, they are resourceful, task focused, good in a crisis, direct. Um, but over here in this negative end, they, um, they don't do people, if I just put it like that. Um, they think people make a fuss and, and why do people have to bring emotions to work? You're not paid for your emotions. And what do you mean I've got to keep saying thank you to people? They get paid, don't they? Why, why, why would I need to do that? So, and they don't like to share their feelings. Um, they think that's none of your business. And they can often not be very good in a group. They don't have a lot of small talk. They, they just don't know how to do chit chat. Police people do. They're very good at it. They probably do too much of it. Be Strongs will be the people who sort of hang around on um, the edge of groups, not quite knowing what to say. They really want a job to do so they don't have to talk to people. But let's remember the good stuff. The, the being task focused, they will attack, that's the wrong word, they will um, go about the issue of saying to somebody, your work isn't good enough, in a way that won't always take account of feelings. It's quite a bald thing, because um, they don't really do that stuff. 
Okay, so the driver end is where is is stressful. It's where we're under stress. Um, we're not in what I call the here and now. We're not we're not grounded. We're somewhere else. So we often get to that place when, as I say, we do those things where we're not taking care of ourselves. And of course, the working style end is the opposite of, of um, stress and not in the here and now. It's where we are in flow. It's where we are conscious of what's going on around us. We're checking reality. Um, we're grounded. <laughs> 